let's look at uh, uh, Kwame Kruma growing up and then traveling overseas because that is where the thing become to get more interesting because he then mingle. Mm -hmm. Of course, we pay attention to the diaspora here. I'm here in Italy and I'm connected with you in Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the mm -hmm. things that we are paying attention to is the African in diaspora uh, because uh, that mm -hmm. is where it begins to get more interesting now. Because Kwame Kruma is now in the U.S. So tell us about his traveling overseas. Was there anything that really um, was, that, was there anything that really led to to he going to to oversee to study? Was there a kind of um, a mission behind it? Uh, so tell us what you know about him traveling overseas to study. Go then, and that is where he will meet the, the message of Marcus Garvey, and then he will come home with a lot of messages that will that will transform the. Yeah. And the messages of uh, of Pan Africanism that were making uh, the hero of Pan Africanism actually. So go go from there. Okay. So the 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 first thing I would say is that I mean no man lives I mean in in isolation. I mean people become who they are as a result of their interaction with the environment, with with the people they find themselves with, with their contemporary. Now, Nkrumah was born sometime in 1909, right? And as a young boy who has been taken to school by the mother and having loved school, he enjoyed studying. And successfully, he graduated from school, from basic school. So upon that, he then began to start some job as a people teacher. And apart from Nkrumah's mother, Ogbehi, another person who I think we need to give, give credit to, to having contributed to Nkrumah's development and to having fueled his desire in education is a, a Roman Catholic father called Father Fisher. And I, I, the reason why I'm taking my time to explain some of these things is because sometimes these are the, the nitty gritty details of the personality of a leader that we often skip and people don't often pay attention to, but they are very important. Now, let me read from the autobiography again, all right? And let us all appreciate what Reverend Frazier did for Nkrumah. Now, at page 11, this is what Nkrumah talks or says about the, the Roman Catholic father. He says, about this time, I came under the influence of a Roman Catholic priest, a German called George Fisher. This large and well-disciplined man seemed to take a liking to me, and he did much to help me in my studies. In fact, he became almost my guardian during my early school days and so relieved my parents of most of the responsibility with regard to my primary education. My father was not at all religious, but my mother was converted to the Catholic faith, and it was through her and Father Fisher that I was also baptized into the Roman Catholic Church. In those days, I took my religion seriously and was very often to be found serving at Mass. Now, unquote, this is Nkrumah speaking about the contribution of Father Fisher. Now, from that on, he goes to school, he lies school, Nkrumah becomes a people teacher, a young people teacher. And it takes another reverend man of God, right, to discover Nkrumah and his talent and introduce him to another phase of education. Here I'm talking about Reverend Frazier. Now, I'm making mention of these people because these are the people who can, or people who help to build up a leader. A leader cannot build up himself. You, you don't become a leader right on the spot. Some people have to contribute to making you a leader or not. Now, Reverend Fazer was a principal of a government school which was known as Prince of Wales, or in Ghana now, it is known as Achimota School. It's one of the best second cycle schools you can find in Ghana, perhaps in Africa. 
And Reverend Frazier had to travel way back to the village where Nkrumah was teaching as a people teacher. At that time, Nkrumah was just 17 years old. And Reverend Frazier, having seen Nkrumah, a young boy teaching, he said, wow, this guy is smart. And I need him in the government school to be trained as a young teacher. So Reverend Frazier now tells Nkrumah that he has to go to Accra, comes to the city to be schooled as a young teacher. Nkrumah comes to Accra, he enrolls at Achimota. He, 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 he is appreciative of another level of education and he's getting to develop himself as a young boy or as a young African who has been introduced to education by these people. Now, fast forward, Nkrumah completes Achimota school, right? Now, the excitement about traveling to the diaspora, where did it come from? That's the first question. Who are the people who influenced Nkrumah to want to travel to the diaspora to study? Now, another personality I will make mention of is called James Iman Kwejri Agri. Kwejri Agri was one of Africa's foremost educationists. In fact, he was the vice principal of the Prince of Wales College. And listen to what Nkrumah says about him in his Nkrumah's autobiography, page 14. This is what Nkrumah says. But the figure to whom all Africans looked that day was Dr. Kwejri Agri, assistant vice principal and the first African member of the staff. To me, he seemed the most remarkable man that I had ever met and had had the deepest affection for him. He possessed intense vitality and enthusiasm and the most infectious love that seemed to be bubbling up from his heart. And he was a very great orator. It was through him that my nationalism was first aroused. He was extremely proud of his color, but was strongly opposed to racial segregation in any form. So this is another personality that influenced Nkrumah. 